you know, one of the things I, I have enjoyed about deploying is, you know, since we're on the topic of food, is the different regional, you know, cuisines. Oh, you know, yeah. How they, I mean, it's like, you know, you, you go to different places and, you know, they, you just want to find what's the local thing. You know what's the what's the local dish that every restaurant tries to say yeah. they've got the best. You know, exactly. And, you know, then you know I will tell you this. So, grew up in Texas. You know, grew up on Tex Mex, but I also grew up in. A, you know, we've talked about how I grew up in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. It was a Mexican neighborhood. It was not Hispanic. It was not Latino. It was Mexican. All my friends are parents crossed the border. You know, I mean, and uh, and so I grew up on real Mexican food as well as Tex Mex food, and so. I know what real Mexican food is, you know, along yeah. with the Tex-Mex. And so whenever I go places like New Mexico and, and Arizona and places like that, and I want to see what their Mexican food is like, you know, I could tell you right now that I would be happy if I never had Mexican food in Arizona again the rest of my life. <laughs> really? It, just, it was just, we could not find anything that had any flavor to it out there at all. And you know, but, and, and that was disappointing, but we found some other places that had some pretty good food that we had some, you know, we found a Korean restaurant and some, you know, other, other places that, that were, were pretty good out there. Um, you know, New Mexico, the, the New Mexican style food, again, was not my favorite, but dude, they can make burritos in, in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the thing that I loved about that place. There's a place up in Española, New Mexico, north of, uh, Santa Fe, um, the place is called, uh, um, El Perasol, which is, you know, the umbrella. And, uh, man, you, if you're ever up there, get yourself a, a chicharron and green chili burrito and dude, oh boy. It's good stuff. But we're you know, going to different places and then now we're here and, you know, we were in Mississippi and, you know, it was just southern you know chicken fried food you know there and it was not that great and michigan so, was oh shut up shut your mouth what's that put gravy on it and i'm in uh, yeah in mississippi southern yeah, style. yeah and so uh you know in michigan last year we you know that yeah you know, there was nothing fantastic about there was nothing up there that we were like okay this is great nothing was good. actually we found a mexican <laughs> restaurant though in this little town brandon township michigan that was actually pretty good um you didn't go to uh, then, like a fish fry up in Michigan? We went to this one restaurant that they had a lot of, you know, trout and stuff like that on the menu, and it wasn't that great. You got to um, go. If, you, if you're going to be up north, you got to do like a fish fry where they do pike and walleye. And, yeah. But, uh, but now, you know, we're here in, in, in Myrtle Beach, and, you know, they have – we're like four miles from the North Carolina border in Calabash, North Carolina, which is, you know, all the seafood restaurants here in buffets. It's like Calabash Seafood. Which is basically is how they it's lightly breaded fried you know seafood. It's just a style yeah. that they do. But man, even if you're not getting the calabash style, man, the food here has been great. We we've been happy. It's like every place we traveled this past year was not the food was absolutely forgettable, and uh, and here the food's been been pretty good. And so we're we're getting a little spoiled uh, while we've been here. But we're trying to incorporate cooking a little more. <laughs> you know, yeah, but uh, but yeah, the the whole thing about you know your nutrition when you're on on a deployment and you're deployed, that is the hardest thing, man. And 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 you know, I think if you go into it with a mindset of some people go, oh yeah, well I know I'm going to gain weight during deployment, and I, that'll be okay. You know, well it's not okay because no. what if you leave that deployment and go straight to another one, and then you go straight yeah. to another one, and so you, know, you try to make the best choices possible. You know, that's why I try to go and buy a bunch of salads, you know, and put them in the fridge or, you know, buy stuff that I know is not extra fattening and full of carbs and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And I try to focus on that as much as possible. Um, but then, again, you're sedentary, so you've got to find you, you've got to find a way to, you know, counteract that. And the only way you're going to do it is through less calories and healthier foods. That's the only way you're going to do it. But uh the, you know, and again, it, you're right that the flip side, the, the, the whole thing is that you get to, you get to sample like regional foods, right? Fried ravioli or toasted ravioli in oh. St. Louis, right? Burn ends in Kansas city, you know, brisket in Austin, you know, hot fried chicken sandwich in Nashville. I mean, it's like pork sandwich. The list goes on. Oh yeah. Our pork tenderloin sandwich in Southern Indiana. 
Um, that may yeah. be just like a generally Midwestern. With the, it's like the, the pork tenderloin piece is that big and the bun's like that big. Yeah. Mayonnaise. I mean, it's so good. And, right. you know, we went in Rhode Island. I went to a restaurant called the Providence Oyster Bar, I think it was called. It's a really nice restaurant. And they had like a whole like different bunch of varieties of oysters and clams, which I had never had a raw clam before until that night. And it was absolutely the, some of the best food I've ever eaten in my entire life. We just ordered like, just had the, the waiter surprises, flights of oysters. And I love, I love oysters, good oysters. And sure. then I've gone other places and they're out of season, certainly, because this, who would right mind would eat this, but in the South on the Gulf coast and ordered oysters and they were like that big and it was like a loogie. And they were nasty and they didn't taste good. And it's like, how am oh, I going to, really? first I got to cut it up. I'm, I'm not going to eat the, I can't, even if they're fried, they're just disgusting. But that wasn't because they were in the South. It was because I, they were just out of, I was ordering them at the wrong time of year. But okay. cause we've had them like up in the, the Pacific Northwest and they've been terrible. And then at a different time of year, they've been like absolutely like unforgettable. They're just so good. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your e &O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.